eyes the same way again. And now with top level declassifications and growing global acceptance, incredible and threatening UFO stories are being seen in a new light with fresh eyes and open minds. It flew over the base at an astronomical speed that I'd never seen in my life. A lot of sightings of UFOs happen around military bases. Mysterious craft with pilots from origins unknown reveal themselves and breach our most secret and secure facilities. I was told it was the most haunted county in the world. There are druids, there are witches, a woman pedaling a bicycle without a face. It's a glimpse into the unknown. Highly trained military personnel reveal emotional and terrifying true accounts. Had all the guards out, their weapons drawn, and they were scared to death. UFOs were seen over very important nuclear installations as far back as the 1940s. National security can't protect us if they don't know what they're protecting us from. Those on the front lines of keeping humanity safe reveal harrowing encounters with UFOs. We ignore these at our own peril. There's something scary in the sky, beyond our reach, beyond our control, and beyond our technological abilities. And unknown beings pose a threat to our peaceful existence. These types of sightings should be viewed with deadly seriousness. It's our lives that we're really dealing with here. It's time to look at the sky in a different way. And that's exactly what we're doing. The U.S. government is actively investigating the UFO phenomenon. You question everything that you knew? Alien encounters are no longer just for fiction writers. Where before it might be career suicide to even talk about UFOs, it's finally coming together as the start of a new science. And at the heart of this new science is a stack of emotional testimonies from military personnel, now declassified for the world to hear. From the deck of one of America's most advanced warships, Navy veteran Omar Lara has a very personal and incredible UFO story to tell. Disbelief what? What, what, what was that? Out of nowhere, this object just drops down. Its maneuverability is nothing I've ever seen in my 10 years in the United States Navy. Omar Lara was stationed on the USS Nimitz, servicing the fastest planes on the planet. The USS Nimitz is like a mobile air base. Very important nuclear-powered vessel for the United States Navy. If the United States has to engage in, in any combat situation, the Nimitz fleet will go to that location to stop any threat. In early December 2004, Omar saw an incredible and unexplainable flying object as the Nimitz returned home from the Middle East. He would never be the same again. You would never even think that any aircraft on our planet can even come close to our battle group. There's just so many defense systems that get lit off the minute one of these things are even approaching our vicinity. If the military's prime directive is to prevent all enemies from entering a certain territory and a UFO goes streaking through, then that is a threat of the highest priority Prior to the incident, I wasn't a big UFO follower or believer in the phenomenon. But on this fateful evening, as the Nimitz approaches port, a sailor falls overboard, sending the crew into action. 
we were trying to find out on the flight deck where this guy had fallen over, and they said man overboard, uh, starboard side. In addition to Omar Lara, 30 other crew are present for what happens next. The sailor is illuminated by the spotlight from those who were handling the rescue operation. And that's when this object comes down from, from the sky at an incredible speed. It just stopped and just hovered there. It was oval, 40 feet maybe, the size of one of our H-53 helicopters. Keep in mind, we're still off the coast of San Diego, so something is in basically our airspace and within the vicinity of our country. The shocking UFO encounter stuns Omar and his shipmates. The object had no exhaust flumes, no source of propulsion. It was completely silent military personnel they're trained to be observers to identify different forms of aircraft when you see this object be absolutely silent there's a disconnect there even at a distance you can hear a helicopter in, in the ocean but this thing wasn't giving out sound Scary encounters over restricted airspace have been happening for decades. There were unnerving sightings during the tense early days of the Cold War. One of the most startling encounters uh, took place in July of 1952. Air traffic controllers tracked six unknown aircraft making their way towards Washington, D.C. Numerous saucer-shaped objects were seen. They were captured on radar. I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. People on the ground describe these objects as being bright orange, white-colored objects that slowed down and hovered over the city for a brief moment before changing direction and, and moving again in strange and bizarre ways. Air Force interest in this problem has been due to our feeling of an obligation to identify and analyze to the best of our ability anything in the air that may have the possibility of threat or menace to the United States. This incident had all the credible aspects. Highly trained radar technicians, people from all fields witnessing these craft after we have this whole media frenzy over it. Now, a sighting in the sky is a UFO and is quite possibly extraterrestrial. As a result of this incident, the Air Force began to do significantly more research and investigation into the UFO phenomenon. From the 1950s right up to today, the mystery and fear continues. Any object, enemy, or anything drops into our protected airspace, for us to not be able to do anything to it, it's just a eyebrow raiser for those who are in charge of our safety. Every nation has to maintain its security and then protect it from external threats. But flying objects that we don't understand leave us powerless and vulnerable. Violating the secure airspace of Rafael Hernandez Military Airport in Puerto Rico, an unidentified flying object stuns onlookers, performing unbelievable maneuvers. Customs officers at the Aguadilla Airport were tracking an object via a thermal camera through the sky in Puerto Rico. It made its way over the airport and then over a city and residential area and eventually to the coast where it sort of disappeared into the water, then popped back up out of the water and then back into the sky. The unsettling feeling of not knowing what is this, what's going on, only grows. It's impossible from what we know of our capabilities. We don't have anything that can actually move like that. 
So you have this sort of very compelling video footage of this bizarre UFO traveling both through air and water. The military looked at the video. You had several other organizations look at the video to try to assess what this thing was. There's no genuine, credible, conventional explanation that anybody has been able to come up with. UFO-related breaches around state-of-the-art warships, nuclear missile silos, and strategic military bases leave us open to attack and searching for answers. People within the Navy and the Army are saying that they've seen something and have come forward because they believe that the general population should, should know about it. These are trained professionals and therefore, when they say something is happening, there's a level of credibility that needs to be respected. On the USS Nimitz, Omar Lara and his crewmates are awestruck by the sudden and terrifying sighting of the mysterious craft. This thing shot off to our right. There's no wind up, nothing. It moves so fast that you have to turn your torso just to keep up with it. We would have our jets do flybys and they would be at supersonic speeds. You could follow any one of our jets with your eyeballs. This object, we literally had to move our torso to just keep up with it. Suddenly, the battle station alarm sounds, putting the Nimitz into high alert. When you have unidentified aircraft violating airspace, there's a potential threat there that they're going to have to deal with. I knew it was game time once they alerted to launch the Alert 6. The Nimitz crew prepares to engage with a UFO. It was not a drill. Everyone needs to report to their battle station. Entering a new era of incredible insight. UFO encounters make us question our national security and change the way we look at the sky. These sightings of unknown craft are emotionally charged and often unsettling. As more reports about UFOs come out, especially from people who we deem credible, airline pilots or from people in the military, we start to realize that maybe something strange is actually going on. Aboard the nuclear-powered USS Nimitz, sailor Omar Lara has a front-row view to a mysterious, possibly extraterrestrial craft. This object just drops down at incredible speed and just stops and plants itself there. Having penetrated the U.S. Navy's secure airspace, the unidentified craft is a real and immediate threat. They saw this in the radar room. It was close, it was really close. On the flight deck, the emergency fighter jets are ready to engage. The bell went off for the launching of the Alert 6, and the catapult system is ready to launch. Then, as quickly as it appears, it's gone. And it stopped, made it right angle, and shot right back up. It just disappeared into the vast space. There was no noise, not even a sonic boom, and this thing surpassed the sound barrier. And that was it, it was over. The crew were left awestruck. And as I turn around, there's a sailor who I seen earlier out there also, he was praying. And it looked like he was scared out of his wits. Another sailor, he used the term, what the F was that? We started talking. And the first thing I remember him telling me was, you don't believe in that stuff, do you? And I said, I do now. I think the reason that the government started to really seriously look at the UFO phenomenon was because they were concerned that these could potentially pose threats to US security. You do not know its intentions. You're showing this great show of force and they don't seem to care. To have another enemy come into our waters, 
is just like a big slap in the face to the U.S. government. Why are they here, and what do they want? There's been a lot of speculation that unidentified aerial phenomena tend to gather around nuclear-powered area. We have countless reports of UFOs making incursions over air bases that hold, house, or are launch points for nuclear weapons. In 1967, Officer Robert Salas was serving in an Air Force bunker controlling some of the deadliest weapons on Earth. First, I was a weapons controller and then uh, went on to missile duty at Malmstrom as a missile launch officer. Malmstrom Air Force Base is located in Montana. It housed missiles that were armed with nuclear warheads in the event of a nuclear attack. It was really one of the most important Air Force bases in the United States during the Cold War. The stakes are high, and the responsibility is enormous. We had uh, 15 launch control centers at Malmstrom Air Force Base, and each had controlled 10 nuclear missiles. In one of these secure locations, Robert Salas and his partner had their fingers on the nuclear trigger was 60 feet underground, right below the guardhouse. Take an elevator down. The capsule was made of reinforced concrete, able to withstand a nuclear blast topside. The launch facility was surrounded by fencing. We also had motion sensors everywhere. If given the order, we would have launched missiles. By the way, each uh, missile had the capability of 800 kilotons of TNT. The weapons that they used at uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki were about 15 kilotons. Nearly 100,000 people lost their lives from those explosions. So you can imagine the damage that would have been done from an 800 kiloton bomb. There are few positions in the world that bear the responsibility that a nuclear launch code officer has. We needed to be fairly reliable because if we had decided without orders to launch missiles, we could have done that. We could have actually launched 10 nuclear missiles. We had six guards fully armed upstairs we felt pretty good that no one could really get access to the weapon systems. But on this fateful day, UFOs would challenge everything. First thing that happened is I got a call from my topside guard. They said there's strange lights in the sky flying above the facility moving very fast. He doesn't hear any engine noise. Okay, we're stopping in midair and reversing course, which airplanes don't do. I even said, you mean like UFOs? I had no idea that things would get pretty dramatic very shortly. And it won't be the only time mysterious craft penetrate and threaten nuclear security. F.E. Warren Air Force Base is one of several very important United States bases that have nuclear weapons. On October 23rd, 2010, the base was not able to communicate with about 50 of their ICBM missiles. The Air Force stated that it was only for about 59 minutes. The shutdown of communications was much longer. But maybe even more importantly was the fact that there was a large cigar-shaped UFO that was over that base at the time of the communication breakdown in which they could not control those nuclear missiles. If these craft are coming in and interfering with our systems, that is a huge message that we can control all of your technology and you are essentially defenseless every now and then one of these 
unknown objects is in the vicinity where nuclear missiles go offline or where we just lose control over them. There are obvious parallels between the situation at Warren in 2010 with Malmstrom Air Force Base back in March of 1967. I got the second call, and this time things were very serious upstairs because he was screaming into the phone, literally frightened. He said they had all the guards out, their weapons drawn. Looking at this glowing and pulsating reddish orange colored light, about 40 feet in diameter. It was hovering uh, just above the front gate, and they were scared to death. Emotions run high as Robert, deep underground with little information, is faced with a conflict that could snowball into thermonuclear war and total global destruction. I thought someone was attacking the facility. If you want to send a very dramatic message, you hit your enemy where they feel they are the strongest. And that would have been our nuclear arsenal. He was screaming into the phone, wanted me to tell him what to do. I think I said something like, make sure nothing comes into the fenced area. Use whatever force necessary. We had a display panel of what the status of our missiles was. And I looked over there just to see that, you know, get reassured that all our missiles were still green and ready to launch. And at that point, we get klaxons and bells going off in the capsule. That's an indication that something was wrong with our missiles. So we looked over at the board, and we saw our missiles turning from green to red, meaning uh, they were unlaunchable, disabled, no go. It's a very dangerous situation. To be able to fly right into a nuclear facility, somehow get control of our technology and it shut them off like a light switch. It's petrifying to know that they have the ability to do that. Unidentified beings in highly advanced craft are making their presence known at some of our most dangerous and well-protected facilities, showing us how helpless we really are. That's a really troublesome reality. The fact is that this is something that military people have been dealing with for decade after decade after decade. 20 meters underground in what should be one of America's most secure nuclear launch facilities, Officer Robert Salas is thrown into an unthinkable crisis. The guards see this red glowing object over the gate what could be breaching their security and hovering over a nuclear facility? I looked over at the board and bing, 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 they were all going from green to red. So while this object was still up there, we lost all 10 missiles. What you had was this moment where if the Russians had launched nuclear missiles at the United States, mounts from Air Force Base would not be able to respond with a counterattack. Raising the unfathomable stakes, the loss of missile control isn't the only problem. Along with the no-go indications at two of the launch facilities, we had lights uh, indicating intrusions. As this security crisis with global implications unfolds, Robert Salas and his team are left terrified and confused. In 2004, Omar Lara and other Navy personnel saw a mystifying craft 
penetrate their airspace. You're not sure where it's coming from, and it's behaving in ways that don't really make sense to your own understandings of flight. And his sighting wasn't unique. It was shocking to hear that there were other incidents involved with the Nimitz. Recently declassified evidence reveals the incredible UFO mystery to the world and corroborates Omar Lara's story. On November 14th, 2004, the USS Nimitz was off the coast of California. Naval aviators were diverted from their training to a, a real life intercept situation to identify and track a target that had gotten too close to the ship. Locking onto the mysterious object, they also recorded with the infrared camera mounted to their jet. What the? What is that? What is that thing? You see that? It just doesn't give any indication of being a normal aircraft. It's this sort of white tic tac shaped object, 40 feet long, which happens to be an incredibly common description of UFOs that we've gotten for decade after decade. The object then accelerated at a very fast pace away from his fighter plane. Whoa! What is it? I don't know, sir. You're talking tens of thousands of miles per hour. We don't have anything that we know of that can do this. Once I saw the video, it was just like, oh, wow, there it is. Omar Lara seems to have seen something very similar, maybe the same object. And to the shock and surprise of many around the world, 13 years after the incident, the U.S. government declassified the footage. The sighting gives a lot of credibility just by the fact that it was released by the Pentagon itself. It's significant because it's the first time that it's ever happened. Saying that the entire intelligence apparatus of the United States of America does not necessarily know what's going on in its airspace all the time is a failure of intelligence and poses risk to public safety. It's impressive and it's, and it's frightening all at the same time. And these disturbing sightings are not only in the United States. Major Lori Rayfeld was a security officer with the U.S. Air Force stationed in England at the white-knuckled peak of the Cold War. RAF Bent Waters and Woodbridge, about 50 miles north of London, near the North Sea. The mission was, if anything happens with Russia or anything with communist activity, they would load these F-4s with nuclear bombs. RAF Bent Waters is a joint British-American airbase the strategic location that if the Soviet Union ever attacked Europe, both England and the United States would have a tactical point from which to launch a counterattack. The most forward base where NATO had nuclear weapons that were aimed at the Soviet Union. Making Lori Rayfeld's job of ensuring base security absolutely critical. We were either on patrol or we were working at a gate. Eastgate was really remote. It was at the end of the runway. There was a big forest right behind it, Rendlesham Forest. The fog would roll in, you know. I mean, it would look like something out of one of those, those scary movies. I was told it was the most haunted county in the world. But UFOs aren't something Lori thought about. They were never on my radar. I never thought that I would be a witness to a UFO and to realize the, the heaviness of seeing one. I was working a midnight shift, and my uh, partner at the time, who was on patrol with me, we had to go out to the gate and make sure it was still locked. It was about zero, 0300 hours in the morning, and I'm filling out my 
check sheet and we're just talking. I'm looking straight out toward the North Sea and I see this light coming in. I thought that's really strange. It came in at a regular approach that we were used to. It looked like a, an oval kind of a light. Then all of a sudden it stopped and it hovered. There was no sound coming from it whatsoever. And then it went up, down, left, right. And it was as if it was kind of saying, wow, we're being seen, what should we do? We were both stunned because we'd never seen anything like that. And then it burst, broke into three pieces. The light kind of throbbed a little bit before it broke into the three pieces. The incredible UFO encounter leaves Lori frozen. The fact that this aircraft was in our airspace was really dangerous. I was just thinking, what are we seeing here? It's not making any noise, no mechanical noises. And it went right straight up into the sky and pretty much disappeared. It was concerning because not even a few miles away were the nuclear bombs. Shocking encounters like Lori's tell military professionals they don't have the security they thought they had. There are hundreds and hundreds of genuine, startling military UFO engagements that have happened over the years. From Cold War UFO sightings to present day encounters, these mysterious events share chilling similarities. In Omar's case, the fact that it happened in the setting of this naval group of ships really said, we want everyone here to know what our capabilities are. Malmstrom Air Force Base, that's about as serious as you can get manipulating nuclear weapons. What if they wanted to try to launch these weapons? What could we have done about it? These unidentified craft flown by unknown pilots shock and mystify. Nothing that I've ever seen in my life can do that to those movements that made us realize just how serious and, and how intense this was. Spectacular UFO sightings and potential extraterrestrial encounters send shockwaves through our perceived security with incredible ease. You see this object drop down at supersonic speeds, sit there and zoom off and shoot right back out to space with no sound, no exhaust. We don't have helicopters, we don't have drones, we don't have aircraft that can make a true right angle turn. They don't behave according to the laws of aerodynamics. Then you start to ponder who was flying that? What was this technology? Whoever it is, it's something that we don't have on this planet. Keeping an open mind, it's really important for government, military, for scientists. There have always been such factions in the intelligence community's analysis of this who concluded, no, this is from another civilization, one that we don't know how to identify. And their best guess was that these were interplanetary or extraterrestrial. It's a statement that bears great weight, and it's not easy to make. It wasn't spoken about so much because the ridicule within the community was really, really strong. But the alarming evidence keeps piling up. The way it moved, it would be incredible to be able to have that technology, but we don't have it. Laurie described it as moving like an etch-a-sketch. And then the object splits into three separate craft. 
Lori Rehfeldt isn't the only one to have the incredible experience of seeing a UFO break apart. It also happened during a spectacular high-speed extraterrestrial sighting over Aguadilla, Puerto Rico. It sort of tumbles midair and then breaks up into pieces and then it continues to fly. There's really not a good explanation in terms of the science for these things. And one terrifying thought keeps emerging. If we don't understand them, how can we protect ourselves? For Robert Salas, the nuclear missile crisis intensified when the UFO reappeared. We had lights indicating intrusions, so we'd send security guards to check that out. When they arrived, they observed the same kind of pulsating light. All hell broke loose on the base as they were trying to get to the bottom of what this thing was. We didn't know what we were dealing with. They had to confront something that they couldn't understand. They never recovered from that and, and were taken off security duty. But how could any UFO and its unseen voyagers so easily disarm these nuclear missiles? They're heavily secured and they have backup systems to ensure nothing goes offline and no incidents occur. The object would have had to send a signal through 60 feet of earth and concrete and penetrate the cabling system, which we had to each missile. This was triply shielded against electromagnetic interference. So it would have to do that individually to each missile. And within seconds. It's a shocking realization with gut-wrenching possibilities. I don't think this could have been anything terrestrial. Something happened that made those missiles go offline for an entire day. That should never have happened. The national security implications ripple way out beyond Malmstrom Air Force Base. The initial message that went out from Strategic Air Command said the fact that these 10 missiles went down for no apparent reason is of grave concern to this command. Air Force Office of Special Investigations said we would never speak of this at all under pain of uh, penalty of prison. We do hear lots of stories of people being told not to talk about their sightings. After the incident, we never heard another word about it. The torturous silence Robert Salas endured is not unique. There was no official investigation conducted after we saw the UFO sighting. It was just really frustrating that I couldn't pursue or figure out what just happened. And an officer shuts down Omar Lara. He popped rank on all of us and told us to cease the conversation and that he did not want to hear this anymore. Having something in the skies unknown, very much a mysterious entity, is very threatening to the, the kind of claims that the nation is built upon. What if we face incredible powers that can leave us helpless? They can reposition themselves instantaneously. They can certainly disable our communications. This is not a drill, and luckily, it's no longer a hushed secret. These objects and whoever is controlling them have enormous capabilities So I don't think we have the ability to defend against. With so many remarkable sightings by people in uniform and respected professionals all over our planet, ufology is no longer on the fringe. There have been some incredible events in the last several years that have really opened up the field and the mainstream is now looking at it with credibility. The New York Times dropped an article about a secret investigation program run out of the Pentagon. It seems that the Pentagon has been interested in unidentified aerial phenomena for a really long time. And the mounting fear of the unknown intensifies with every new encounter. So it's up to us to ask the more difficult question is, what could those things be? Maybe it will open up other doors to understanding. 
things stop becoming paranormal and they start becoming real. For these members of the military, there's some things basic training didn't cover. After seeing this, my mind is very open now. Whatever they are, they're so far ahead. There's no way this could have happened from anything that we have designed here on Earth. I knew it was not from here. And as the UFO mystery reshapes our modern consciousness, terrifying interference at nuclear facilities continues and intensifies. I realized that my incident was just a small grain of sand in the large sandbox of military and nuclear facility incidents. They also had an incident in Ukraine in 1982 where they actually started a nuclear missile on its uh, launch sequence and then shut it down before it launched. But is UFO interest in our nuclear facilities a threat? Maybe they're just watching us for now. They want to know, are we going to be a nuisance? Do we have the capability of being an actual hassle for them? So that's enough to get their attention right there. They could have done a lot more damage to our missiles. They did not. The message I take from all of that is they would like to see us get rid of our nuclear weapons. Solid fuel. Nuclear weapons are not weapons of war. They are weapons of annihilation. A lot of sightings happen around military bases. I think a lot of ufologists would say that's because there's aliens here monitoring these bases and making sure that we're not doing anything that's going to cause such destruction as what we did with Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I heard in 2018 there was indeed another UFO incident at Malmstrom Air Force Base. Why the ETs persist on giving us these situations is because we persist on producing nuclear weapons. We all are carrying pieces of a puzzle that we need to put together. I truly think that these entities out there are, are watching over us. And I just think that we're at a level where we're more open to it. For our species, the mystery and challenge goes on. Maybe science doesn't have all the answers that we thought it would be able to provide us. Stories of aliens or UFOs point to other possibilities. The dawn has risen on a bold new realization. And UFO encounters at our most secure facilities leave more unsettling questions than answers. When an unknown object is invading sensitive installations, particularly if they have a nuclear connection, which is often the case, that is a problem. Ongoing professional analysis of UFO sightings has brought us to a breathtaking tipping point. We have academics and people of power and, and notoriety coming forward and saying that it's, it's okay to believe. There's also a broader acceptance in our public to accept the ET hypothesis that these are UFOs of extraterrestrial origin and that they're here visiting us on Earth. It's the first time that governments have come forward and saying that they're taking UFOs actually seriously. It's an exciting time, and our abilities to understand the mysteries are growing exponentially. The perk of dealing with UFO reports today versus 50 years ago is we have a lot of technology at our disposal. An AI system can run through thousands of reports in seconds and find patterns that a human couldn't do on their own. As more organizations are potentially willing to spend money on cataloging and studying UFOs, you're going to get more data of what we're maybe dealing with. For a very long time, human beings have been fascinated by who or what may exist beyond our planet. But as UFOs reach our most secure areas, are they truly a global security threat?
I think if they meant us harm, we would be gone. But that doesn't mean there isn't some level of threat. They are flying around us with impunity. They're causing alarm. They can vastly outperform us. That's a threat in itself. So we need to get a better understanding of this and maybe even try to start communicating. Even to this day, I still don't know what it was. You know, I'm always looking like, is it gonna come back tonight? Am I gonna get to see it? I'm always looking up to see if, just if I get a quick glimpse of that thing again. I don't know whether I was chosen for any particular reason to have this encounter, but I did feel that once I did have the encounter, I had the responsibility of making it public whenever I could. I think the powers to be out there know that I'm on a journey and I am very curious and I truly believe they want to encourage all of us to figure out how we all fit into this puzzle. I see it as a blessing. I truly do.